down at the park, it's time to turn on the lights Because the Danbury Westerners are playing tonight They'll be swinging their bats and they'll be hitting home runs It's a night of excitement and family fun Westy helps everybody cheer on the team As the crowd snacks on popcorn and delicious ice cream On a warm summer night, you know it's always a treat Westerners baseball sing the canopy beat Everybody knows the score The fans are screaming out for more Excitement builds on through the night This victory is soon in sight The runner advances as he heads for home plate Rounding the bases there will be no debate When the last run is in The fans will proclaim the Danbury Westerners have won the game. Welcome to the Danbury Westerners podcast with your host, Christian Gardecki. And welcome to episode four of the Danbury Westerners podcast. I am your host, Christian Gardecki, here back once again for the fourth episode of our podcast. And over the next handful of weeks or so, maybe until the season starts, we'll be interviewing a Danbury Westerners player who will be coming on a 2021 roster. And we start that today. So we bring back a returning Danbury Westerner. He is a current senior. At LeMoyne College, he will be a grad senior with the Danbury Westerners. His name is Joe Vale. He was a member of the 2019 Danbury Westerners. And we had him come on here to the Westerners podcast for episode number four. And that will be coming up shortly. But welcome, everyone. We uh, hope you enjoyed our episode last week with the director of player personnel, Alex Giobi. Uh, as we went through the entire roster and we have reached out to... About 15 or 16 players who are on the Danbury Westerners roster currently. And we will have them on in the future here. Including a couple returning Danbury Westerners. Including Joe Vale here today. As for the Danbury Westerners schedule that is currently being worked on. As Alex said last week. Should be out within the next couple weeks. Uh, we Our interns have been selected for the most part. We will uh, get to know them. Hopefully have my broadcast partner Sam Solzinski possibly on at some point before the season to re-preview the season and talk about everything going on with the Westerners coming towards the season. Uh, We'll also have some more Westerners board members and volunteers and all those people. And we're looking for more volunteers too. Uh, So if you're interested in being a Danbury Westerners volunteer, setting up tables at Rogers Park, working the concessions, working the merchandise, working the beer garden, all that stuff, send an email to Bill Guider. Bill at DanburyWesterners.com for more information and how you can be involved with the Danbury Westerners. And we're also looking for some more interns. So you can send another email to Bill uh, with your resume. And if you are an intern, a college student, high school student uh, in the area who wants to work in sports, we're still looking for some more people to help out. We're looking for a publicity manager especially uh, to help raise the Danbury Westerners brand a little higher as it is right now. Um... And we also want to have more fans at Rogers Park. That's more important. And hopefully this year with everything going on, uh, we're starting to reopen in March here in the state of Connecticut as uh, this episode is going up on Tuesday. I'm recording this on Sunday, uh, right at the end of February. And it'll be very, very exciting to have fans back at Rogers Park, hopefully. And we're going to have some sort of season. Uh, That is confirmed to us. We're going to have some sort of season as was confirmed by Bill Guider, and uh, it will be very exciting to be back at Rogers Park. Uh, all 14 cities will work through their different mandates in the six states around, and we'll also talk about some of the cities with Joe Vale, some of his favorite places to go in the AIC, and we'll have an alumni spotlight after our interview with Joe. So stick around as our interview with Joe Vale 
is coming up next after these words from our Danbury Westerners Championship Sponsors. Danbury Westerners Baseball is brought to you by our Championship Sponsors. Bill and Carol Poland Endowment Fund, City of Danbury, Danbury Parks and Rec, Fairfield County Bank, Family and Children's Aid, Hatch City Physical Therapy, and the Schaefer Family. Thank you to our championship sponsors of the Danbury Westerners. Welcome back to the Danbury Westerners podcast. My name is Christian Gardecki, back here once again here on episode four. And we're with a returning Danbury Westerner. He is a right now a junior at Lemoyne College out in the Syracuse area. Uh, he's from Cromwell, Connecticut. Welcome back here, second year Danbury Westerner, Joe Vale. Joe, how's it going? Christian, man, thank you for having me, bro. It's going well. It's going really well. Now, obviously, you can't see Joe. We, we, don't, we don't show video on this, but Joe has grown his hair out since the last time Western fans have seen him. It is now, I'm going to call this 2015-era Jacob DeGrom, because I'm a Mets fan. Right. Uh, 2015-era Jacob DeGrom. What's up with growing the hair out, Joe? I don't know. I, so, I kind of talked to my dad about it uh, about a year ago. I was just like, you know what, man? Like, right after, actually, our season ended in Danbury. Right. I was like, you know what? Like, I think I'm getting a haircut here, and I'm, like, not getting another one because <laughs> – when I enter the real world, you know, you got to keep everything clean. So he was like, yeah, I like it. So, uh, you know, the awkward phase was a, lo- was a long period, but I'd say about three, four months ago, it actually started looking good. And now, you know, I got to keep it going. So Now you're getting set for your another season here at LeMoyne. It's your senior season there, although you have another, se- another year of eligibility, correct, yeah. because of COVID? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, which, which would make you eligible to come to the NECVL. Uh, you're from Cromwell, Connecticut, which is around near the Hartford area. Uh, went to Xavier High School. Um, so, first, I want to talk about your time at LeMoyne. Um, you know, what was the decision going to LeMoyne first and then now being there for a long time? Well, uh, actually, the head coach, Scott Cassidy, came and saw me while I was pitching, um, like, in the middle of my recruitment process. It started pretty late, actually, for me because – I was not throwing hard at all until around like the end of my junior year. I started to pick up some velocity and that's when I started to get some looks. So a lot of D1 teams, like very good D1 teams have already been filled since my sophomore year. And I didn't even know that's how the recruiting process worked. So when uh, Coach Cassie here reached out to me, uh, I was looking at a couple D1 schools in Connecticut along with a couple other any 10 schools, but um, they made the best offer and, um, obviously, you know, he, he himself pitching in the majors, uh, I think that was like a big selling point and, uh, you know, it speaks for itself. I think, you know, uh, obviously Jojo coming through here, um, Murph coming through here, another NECBL guy. So, uh, you know, we put out a lot of good talent over the years and even this year we're still stacked up looking good. Yeah. And you talk about Jojo who I was going to bring up next, and JoJo is a guy who came here in 2016. He played shortstop, and he also played, um, also played, also pitched. So your freshman year, you come into Lemoyne, and you have Josiah Gray, who's a senior then, or I believe he was a senior or junior. He was a junior. And he was a junior, and he comes in, and he's got he's a lot of looks. He gets drafted early by the Dodgers. What was it like playing with him, a guy who is honestly one of the best guys we've had in the last ten years of the Westerners yeah, after Joe- Mike Ford. Yeah, JoJo's a brother to me. Uh, he's like one of my best friends. Uh, I still talk to him to this day uh, almost daily. Um, when I came here, he took Murph and I uh, under his wing, and I basically hung out with that kid every day uh, down in his dorm, you know, playing MLB the show, doing whatever. And, you know, it was never like – we never made it like a weird thing that this kid was right. like unbelievable. But um, it was definitely cool that – um, you know, he took me under his wing and, you know, he showed me a bunch of stuff and he's still working me with me today. He'll send me video. Uh, he's been sending me video from, you know, in Dodgers camp now with him throwing and I'll send him stuff. And we both look at our, at each other's stuff. And, you know, of course it's great to see, uh, you know, what he's doing in the, in the pros now, but even when he was here, he was unbelievable. So it's been awesome. And I talked to Josh Perro, the now ex-manager of the Danbury Westerners, about JoJo. And Josh tells me that JoJo is the best player he's ever coached. And that's a lot for Josh, who's coached a bunch of drafted guys, you know, Aaron Antonini, and then he's coached you, obviously. 
and uh, and now he's at uh, up in the Troy area. And yep. JoJo's a guy who he's ranked the best prospect in the Dodgers organization after they traded Jeter down to hit a home run today for your Red Sox. Yep. And JoJo's a guy who Westerner fans liked. He was a community guy, much like you are with the Westerners in some cases. And when I, I, I think he's going to get a chance in the major leagues this year, I think you feel the same way as well. I agree. I think something that really separates JoJo, which is something I try to strive to do, is not only is he like a phenomenal player, he's a great person. Right. Uh, I think that's something that a lot of people lose sight of. Um, when you see people on TV screens and stuff, you don't know about their character and like who they are. But um, I think the way JoJo, like he's already given back a ton. Um, even now he still reaches out uh, to, you know, random people who ask him for help. He's always being, you know, a stand-up guy, you know, and he's definitely somebody I look up to. And yeah, so and also he uh, he so he's the number one guy. And funny enough, you know, the Newport Goals just put out a graphic uh, of all the NECBL teams with their prospects who were put on the Baseball America top thirty for each team, and they forgot Danbury. So we gave Newport a little tough time there. It's tough, you know. Newport is our rival. They've been our rival for the last twenty years or so. So it's it's tough. But uh, JoJo's a guy who deserves recognition. I do love playing at Cardine's Field, but uh, uh, we'll get yeah. to that. We'll get we'll I'll, get I'll to the road more. trips. Yeah, all good. We'll get to the road. Love play, love going there. That's one of my favorite parks there. And now we go back to that 2019 season, and that team was so fun, Joe. And I think you agree with me on that. One of the most fun teams I've been a part of. You know, I don't play baseball. I'm a hockey player, as you know. And in, in terms of teams, probably one of the most fun teams I've ever been a part of. I hope you feel the same way. Yeah, uh, no, we had a lot of fun. I think um, for sure when we had like the full roster going, everybody was not injured. Uh, I think we kind of got derailed by injuries there um, yeah. heading off the top. But uh, I know you remember being the number one Westerners fan in the entire world. That not we a were fan. Ranked, I worked for the we team. We were ranked, like fourth in the country at one point. Absolutely. Were. And then yeah. you know, kind of went down from there. But um, yeah, I mean, I still talked to a bunch of guys uh, from that team. Uh, reached out to Emmett. He's been throwing the ball really well. Still talked to Joey. Your best friend here. Your, yeah. your best friend here, yeah. Still talked to Joey. Still talked to Zaffer. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of dudes I, you know, uh, seeing Cam recently. He's been crushing the ball. Right. Oh, my gosh. We'll, we'll get to that, too. Uh, we'll get to those guys that are coming back. And uh, obviously, we're going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, this season, the NECBL, now there's another new team will be coming now. Uh, gone is New Bedford, which uh, I'll agree, tough trip. <laughs> tough trip, me. tough park. It took, it took me out of the All-Star game, that team. I know, literally. We're in the league, and they showed up and always had had something to do with me. Yeah, and I, you were talking about that in the uh, documentary about how uh, about how Newport, New Bedford was a tough team to get play against. Oh but God. now in, in their place is the Bristol Blues. And for you, being from Central Connecticut, You'll have a chance to go play at Muzzy Field. How cool is that going to be? Uh, I haven't played at Muzzy Field since I played for RCP, which is a, a Legion team um, out of Rocky Hill, Cromwell, and Portland. Yep. It's been a long time since I played at Muzzy Field, but I remember playing there um, and going through Legion ball. Like, we were a great team, but uh, unlike these AAU programs and things like that that play at great stadiums all the time, that Muzzy Field and Palmer Field in Middletown, or yeah. like two places that I, when I was growing up, it was like, oh my, like this is sick, you know, being able to pitch there and having the stands and hearing all the stories of the people who've played there before. So yeah, it's going to be nice to play there. And my parents are already looking forward to it because it's 20 minutes instead of, you know, the 50, 50 minute commute down to Danbury. So yeah. Now talking about your returning teammates in the Westerners, there are six other guys with you. Uh, you have Christian Algretti, who we had on our first episode uh, Matt Zafino, who we'll have on a future episode. Cam Ceruto out of Army, who's part of the new uh, military rule that the NACBL has. It won't take any roster spots away. And uh, Justin Jordan just got added to the roster recently. And uh, Cam Masterman, which you mentioned, lighting up. How important for Coach Ratchford and Coach White, who's also here and hit the rest of their staff, to have you guys who are returning, who know the NACBL, especially with Angelo Tonis, too who played with Newport, uh, not Newport, uh, Martha's Vineyard. You guys know what it, what the grind is of a regular NACBL season. Yeah, I think it's definitely important. Um, you know, you get a lot of guys, uh, like, for, for example, for me, I played in the Hamptons before coming to the NACBL, 
and it was like a shorter season. I didn't really uh, – I ended up going home early from the Hamptons with a shoulder injury. But the travel in the Hamptons is completely different from the travel in the NECBL. You're right. having like two, three hours – a trip and then you got to come home you got to drive like for me i got to come home and i got to drive home an hour so um it's definitely definitely hits different especially when you're trying to pitch and then recover or hit and then recover so um it's definitely important having some veteran guys in the in the clubhouse you know to push everybody through yeah and you also bring up we have a couple we have another player coming from lemoyne one of your teammates uh, jacob mazer and when talking to Alex Gioby in the last episode, he said Mazer is probably the next big pitcher out of Lemoyne behind Ryan Murphy, who we saw at Vermont, and obviously JoJo and yourself. Uh, what can you attest to him, and uh, what will expect Westerners fans expect from Jacob Mazer? Uh, Jake's great, man. Um, we've been using him out of the pen the last couple of years, and uh, just seeing him grow and develop uh, under cast in the last couple of years has been crazy. Uh, he came in as an outfielder, barely pitched, wow. very similar to JoJo, actually. Right. Um, and then got off the mound, um, and actually he's had a big velocity spike. Uh, he's throwing the ball really well right now, and, uh, you know, he's going to be a guy who's going to get a lot of innings for us in the spring, and he's going to be key to our success. So then, you know, hopefully just bring it into the summer. But, yeah, he's a great guy, high energy. He likes to have a lot of fun, so he's a good guy to have. And now talking about the extended offseason you had, uh, you know, the long offseason after COVID shut everything down, you yourself, you went, you got working. I mean, you were telling me that your Vigo has gone up at least five miles per hour or something to that extent. Uh, tell me a little bit how you worked through that and how it has gone up. Yeah. So after this spring season, I had to look myself in the mirror and like see that something's wrong. You know, um, I think I had great success in Danbury, but it wasn't, you know, it was a prolonged success for that summer period, but it's something that I didn't really have uh, the majority of the time. So I had to really look myself in the mirror and be like, okay, like you need to change the way you've been going about things. And uh, I think I made a big change in my mechanical stuff. I started really working on some things of that nature. Uh, I got into like plyo balls um, with drive line. I started really using those for my arm. I was kind of using them a little bit in Danbury, but not the right way. I was kind of just doing my own thing, but I got like a structured program. And then I kind of changed the way I lifted and ate. And I kind of just, it's not like I didn't care um, right. to a degree, but it's like now I take a lot more pride in what I'm doing. So uh, like I get to the field, I, I stretch, I throw, it takes like an hour for me to just throw like 120 feet. Cause I'm all like, I'm all about the process and being in a good spot. But um, it's definitely worked out. Everything looks better. And uh, I'm definitely coming to Danbury better than I was before, which is, which is good. Now, you were mentioning, as if people didn't watch the documentary, Joe talked about how different it is to pitch um, to a wooden bat. And can, can you explain a little bit about how that changes, especially when you're in the NACBL where it's mainly for you guys to get scouted and possibly get drafted or signed somewhere, how different pitching to a wooden bat is compared to a metal bat, which is you know, what you usually pitch to in college. Well, I definitely think – well, to start off, actually, uh, my first two years here at LeMoyne, the NE10 was all wood. Oh, was it really? Wow. So, actually, we just shifted over. Wait, was it? Was it our sophomore year we changed the metal? We changed, so, our sophomore year we changed the metal, but our freshman year we were wood. We were wood back conference. Oh, really? So, I had already had experience with it and then going over to Hamptons. But I think it, it is a drastic difference. I think that um, – you know, when you get up there, I think, you know, I haven't watched the pros and everything. I think everything should be wood bat. Um, you know, that's the way the game's played to me. Um, and metal bat, I mean, some of these guys that you find in the NECBL, the Cape, things of that nature, you put a metal bat in their hands, they're hard to get out. You know, so I think, yeah. it, you know, it gives scouts the best look at, at people, you know, seeing the game play the right way. And then, of course, you know, it, you know, it depends. If the hitters, you know, it could be like a mentality, like, you know, I don't have as much power with wood as I do with metal. Um, I think as a pitcher, uh, I can't think about those things, you know, because I'm already thinking about a million things from on the mound. But, um, I, you know, I, I love pitching with wood. It, it's a lot easier. You can throw the ball inside and snap their bat instead of giving up a single. So, right. Yeah. Yeah, and obviously you, you worked a lot with – then pitching coach Pat O'Neill, who is now at Quimpiac, and now you'll be working with Dean White and head coach manager Ian Rashford. How important will it be to work with Ian 
who is coming back for his first full season as a Western. Now, you were on the roster to come last season. Everything got shut down. Uh, how important have you talked to Ian and or even Coach Dean White about uh, this coming season, or have you talked to him about you know what things you need to work on and what you work on when you get to Danbury? I actually just talked to Ratch uh, right before I came up here to uh, to Syracuse. Um, I was working out at my baseball facility, and I saw him. I was like, "Is that Ratch?" <laughs> and he came up to me. We hugged it out and had yeah. a conversation. But it was great to see him. And listen, Ratch is Ratch is a great guy. He's really good with the hitters. So. Uh, I know I'll miss JP, of course. I'll miss Patty. Um, I still talk to Pat, uh, you know, a lot via text and everything. He's getting right. married soon. Yeah, so. c- yeah, congrats to Pat. And, and, uh, Shout out to Pat. To, yeah. Yep. Ooh, Pat, Pat wants to come on the podcast, too, so he'll be on in a future episode. Yeah, get him on. Let him know. Let him know I said hello. Yeah. So that, that's, that's really cool. And, Joe, before we get going here, uh, let's ask a couple of quick rapid fire questions. Favorite road trip in the NECBL? Favorite place you love going? Got to be Newport. Oh, love Newport. I lo- yeah, I love it. I love going down there with my family uh, several times. I didn't even go on the bus. Uh, right. Yeah, I remember that. One of those trips yeah. you didn't go down. The, yeah. you, you guys were at the Marriott across the street, right? Yeah, I went down with my family. Uh, they like the area. So I always tell yeah. them now, uh, if I make a ton of money, I'll have a house in Newport. Yeah. I love it. You know, I love it. One great. of my favorite stories of Newport, this was the year before you were with us. Eli, Eli, was with, Eli, Eli and B-Rod were with us that season. Oh boy. Yeah, I love Eli. I love B-Rod. Um, we went up to Newport. We played him in early June and got smoked. Eli, was, Eli started. We got smoked. 26 to 2, I think it was. Oh, 26 to 2. So we go back the next time. I think Mike Sansone was on the mound out of Fairfield yep. for Newport. So we go back to Newport uh, for July 4th. Eli's on the mound again. We dominate. Danbury, Eddie McCabe, it's a home run out of Georgetown. Danbury wins 4-3, huge upset. And we go out, we eat dinner. Then we, we go back to the bus, and Dan gets the bus going. Dan Sia, bus driver, great guy, gets Stop. the bus going. And... Josh goes, no, everybody get off. They're about to do the fireworks. So we're sitting at the bus depot across the street, and we get off the bus, and the fireworks start going off. So we're watching the fireworks as a team. Great moment. Uh, to talk about the our broadcast and then Jack O'Mara. So that will that's the Newport um, Newport Cardings Field. Love that park. They got the hockey style uh, dugouts too, which are next to each other. I like those, and yeah, I have it. And the so- bullpens. Yeah, and then on July 4th, myself, actually, when you guys all uh, went home on the bus, I stayed in Keene for that July right. 4th when there was like 63,000. It was like – It was six, sick. The exact was 5,300. 5, yeah. 5, yeah, it was a big crowd. Yeah, and my dad and I stayed. We watched the fireworks show after I threw that night. That yeah, you threw that night. That was, yeah. your, that was your best outing as a Westerner that season yeah. too. Yeah. Six scoreless innings, like two-hit ball. Yeah. And luckily, unfortunately, the Westerners did not win that game, but that was a lot of fun. All yeah. right. Um, funniest moment as a Danbury Westerner last year. I think I kind of know what it is. Oh, I don't know. There's a lot. There's a lot. Yeah, there's a lot of times I was just cracking up. I don't really know. I mean, what do you got? What do you think it would be? I, th- I think any time you went up and took my microphone in the press uh, yeah. box. I mean, shouting out the beer garden was always fun. Beer garden, how are we doing tonight? <laughs> yeah. I know. They're, you they're, and Emmett would both come up. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I just think that, to be honest, uh, JP just kind of kept everything loose to the point where, yeah. um, you know, win or loss, I think everybody had, like, a great time. Uh, you know, there's a ton. Of, there, there's a ton of stuff that you know can't be said. We can't. We we can't talk about. No, there's a lot of things I've seen through the years with Josh. Uh, and another thing that I'll remember is, oh, it's actually blanking me now. I I can't remember it now. But there was a lot of things that happened that were so much fun. Uh, when you, when you guys got to bat in the last couple of games of the season, when Eli played all uh, nine okay. innings. I'll say I'll say that that's my that was my fun that was my that, like the most fun I had. Yeah. When JP, that, that. I'd say I'd say when JP let Emmett and I come out with him to take Eli out, take Eli out, yeah. All nine positions, I thought that was really cool. And yeah, that then, was awesome. Uh, I thought when 
uh, JP told me to grab a bat and I had to face a kid throwing 95, but I worked a walk. I thought that was free. I remember that. I was like, yeah, just, oh my God, Vale worked a walk. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that was, I that that was, was crazy. Cool. Yeah. A lot of, football hit. All right. Here's another controversial bus trip question. Least favorite bus trip. Oh, least favorite bus trip. Um, least favorite bus trip's got to be the Vineyard. It's Martha? not. It's not Martha? even close. Because I remember uh, that one night. I remember that one night after Joey pitched. We the first time, right? We got the first stuck. Time. Remember, we had the the um. We got stuck, and they turned the lights off on us. Yeah, they turned the lights off, and then we got on the boat, and it was raining. And oh. it was, it, like I thought the boat was going to tip over. And we and took the picture? Yeah, and then everybody was telling me that there was, like, a ton of sharks in Martha's Vineyard, and I was like, oh, <laughs> no, no. But we yeah. still took the picture after yeah. that game, though. Yeah. The, yeah, the, the bunch of us, yeah. yeah it, it was me, talk. you, Emmett, Zaff, Joey, a bunch of those Boy. guys. We, Bork, Bork. Nice. We, weird guy, yeah. yeah. Um, all there. The first trip I remember because it's featured in the documentary where I yell, Peril, grab on to me, buddy, to Josh. Because I'm sitting next to Josh, and Josh is like, what the hell is going on? Yeah. And that first trip was wild. I didn't go on the third one. Uh, Chris Nathanson, our general manager, went in my place. And uh, I think that's the one where you had that shark scare. Yep. Yeah, it was bad. I just regret like, every time we went to the vineyard, there was something new that was just a little, a little reckless. Now, do you remember going up to Vermont? Now, that is one of my favorite. That was the first weekend of the season. That's one of my favorite. Did you go up with us? I think you did. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I, yeah, I thought that was, that was. I thought that was a good time. I think, um, to me personally, it's not as great um, as it is probably to other people because my dad loves Vermont, so we go. Oh, up I do too. I love going up to Burlington. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. there's not a team there. They just put a uh, Futures League team there, actually. Yep. The, uh, the Lake Monsters are playing there now. And I, I would love to go there and uh, show you guys the waterfront because that is just beautiful. Oh, up there. Gardaki, Lake Champlain. We go Lake all Champlain's the time. great. Yeah. yeah. My dad, we, we go to Burlington all the time. They, we love it up there. Go to that Ben and Jerry's. Oh. Uh, yeah. Right. Stuff, there's yeah. a there's there's a restaurant there that is owned by one of my favorite bands uh or was uh it's over i forget what street it's on it's called orlando's definitely okay. gotta check it out never been there we we, yeah. go to, we like that farmhouse place farmhouse. yeah and that's right across from the uh from the where they do the festivals there yeah, yeah. there's the diner place there too yeah yep. that was but what i remember about that trip was we we beat upper valley the first game yeah, and there was no broadcast. They didn't have their broadcast set up, so Kronberg and I were just chilling in the press box, and not pre- the the dugout. Yep, you guys and, came down. And we and and Dan was standing sitting on the uh, the stairs of the of the press box, and we come Dan Gardella, and we come out, and then we win the game, big win. Westerners went four and zero after that. We go to the next day. Well, we go to an Applebee's. We're just chilling in an Applebee's. And we're, we're just sitting there eating half price apps and, and different things going on. That was a lot of fun. All right. Last question here. Uh, favorite team to play against in the NACBL. Um, I don't know. I don't, I, I have like, I mean, I think the favorite moment I had was playing against Keen on the 4th of July. I yeah. thought that was crazy. So I guess, I guess I'd say playing against Keen. But I think that um, it would probably be – I like playing Newport. Yeah. Um, Newport and Keene, I think – Newport is probably the one. I, I don't think – did we? Did you guys go up and play in Holyoke? We did, yeah. Yeah. It wasn't well, that, as crazy as everybody said. It, yeah. It was I think it's because it was one of those games where it was like a reschedule or something like that. The first time we went, it was like a Sunday afternoon. It, made, it felt like a real minor league Sunday afternoon game when I went there the first time. Yeah. Because it's right there in the shadows of Springfield. Yep. So, a lot of things are going. All right. Well, Joe, that was a lot of fun. Um, hope Good luck this season. What's going on? Can't wait to see you back at Rogers Park here in June. All right, man. Sounds good. Thanks for having me. All right. That is uh, Danbury Westerner, second-year pitcher and current Lemoyne Dolphin, Joe Vale. We'll be right back after this here on the Danbury Westerners podcast.
The Danbury Westerners Baseball Club would like to thank all of their fans, sponsors, and volunteers for 25 fun-filled years. They wish 2020 could have been their 26th, but they're looking forward to seeing everyone at the newly renovated Rogers Park in June and July of 2021. While you're waiting for baseball to resume, please patronize their sponsors. Texas Roadhouse on Newtown Road in Danbury is open for takeout. Fairfield County Bank is available for all your personal and business banking needs. And unlimited signs in Brookfield will help your business cope with a new way of doing business. Thanks once again to Joe Vale of the Lemoyne Dolphins in the Northeast 10 Conference. And he'll be a member once again of the Danbury Westerners for the 2021 season. So he'll come back to Danbury for a second tour of duty with the Danbury Westerners. Now, we'll look through our alumni spotlight this week. Once again, we're we'll looking at players around the college baseball world. Emmett Sheehan, who is a member, uh, as we mentioned with Joe, second outing in the year, another nine strikeouts. He's got 18 on the year in in, four, in about probably 13 innings pitched for Emmett Sheehan so far. He had they have six hits, one walk, two earned, but nine strikeouts on 89 pitches. He's got 18 strikeouts to start the year in 12 innings pitched for the Boston College Eagles does Emmett Sheehan. And obviously Cam Masterman, who we will see this summer at the Western, is still lighting it up. After we mentioned, after, after last uh, week's episode... He hit another home run against Bellarmine. He hit his he hit three home runs in the weekend. Us Westerners, we started a new thing where it'll be former Westerners of the week player and pitcher. Emmett Sheehan was our pitcher of the week. Uh, he had that six out six inning in his first game of the year. Then he had another six against the Duke Blue Devils. Uh, he actually they played against uh, Chad Knight, who was you know the superstar of that Westport Little League team back in 2013. Uh, so nine strikeouts. He's got 18 to start here, does Emmett. And Cam Masterman's off to a hot start. He had three home runs in the first weekend against Bellarmine for the Louisville Cardinals. Him and a bunch of his teammates will be here in Danbury uh, for the summer. We'll have some guys coming on over um, in the future on the Danbury Westerns podcast here on the YouTube. Make sure you hit a like button. Make sure you subscribe. Um... Some of the guys we have coming up here on the Westerners Podcast. Thank you to Alex Giobi, who has set up a bunch of these interviews. So, next week, we're going to have Jimmy Fahey, a local guy, Jimmy Fahey, uh, who is from the from Danbury, Immaculate High School graduate. We'll have Jimmy Fahey. And then in two weeks, we'll have Cam Ceruto, most likely. Uh, Cam Ceruto, another returning Westerner. Also coming up, we, Matt Safino. And then, as I said earlier today, I'll try to get with uh, Sam Solzinski. And we'll have some sort of season preview once we get closer to the season. So that is basically what is coming up soon here on the Westerners Podcast. As we have just wrapped up episode four, basically. What a fun, fun time we had with Joe Vale. Great guy. Uh, now looks like a circa 2015 Jacob DeGrom. But hope you all enjoyed it. And uh, we hope to see you at Rogers Park in the June Make sure you stick around here. We'll have updates on the season. Might have some more video content coming out, too. Uh, might have some video content uh, coming up. And maybe we'll have a video version of the vodcast. Who knows? Uh, I have a lot of plans for the Westerners YouTube as we get closer to the season. Um, and we'll also get to show you some of our interns, some of the people. And, uh, you know, we'll have, like, some pregame shows and a bunch of things going on with the Danbury Westerners. So... Stay tuned to that here in the Westerners podcast. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at D-A-N-B Westerners. It's also the Westerners Instagram as well, as this will come up, come up on Tuesday. And before we get going here, I'd like to remind you that we are also looking for sponsors for the Danbury Westerners this season. So uh, make sure you like and subscribe, obviously, in this. And uh, send an email to Trisha Co. All the information is on the Westerners website. Trisha Co. is in charge of our sponsorships. Make sure you reach out to her if you are a company looking for some more publicity. Trisha Co. is in charge of sponsorships, and we are looking for more sponsors for our 2021 season. And maybe host families, but we're uh, right now, and I will give more information on that coming in the future. So signing off officially here on the Westerners Podcast, Christian Gardecki here. Thank you for listening to Episode 4 here with Joe Vale of the, of the LeMoyne Dolphins. And we hope to have you once again next week for episode 5.
The Danbury Westerners Baseball Club would like to thank all of their fans, sponsors, and volunteers for 25 fun-filled years. They wish that 2020 could have been their 26th, but they're looking forward to seeing everyone at the newly renovated Rogers Park in June and July of 2021. And while you're waiting for baseball to resume, please patronize their sponsors. Pippa Sports Cafe on South Street in Danbury is open for takeout. CT Braces of Danbury and Newtown is available for online consultations. And Ventura Law Personal Injury Attorneys are available to talk about your case 24-7. Super Canopy Beat, everybody knows the score. The fans are screaming out for more. Excitement builds on through the night. This victory is soon in sight. The runner advances as he heads for home plate. Rounding the bases, there will be no debate. When the last run is in, the fans will proclaim. The Danbury Westerners have won the game!